Flying into Bahrain, our plane was largely empty. You definitely know you're heading into an area of unrest when you are one of the only people on the plane uh, headed to that country. On the streets, we discovered an eerie silence. Almost no tourists in the hotels. A strict curfew and military checkpoints. No signs of protests, but we were to find out that the unrest here has not ended. It's just been silenced. We've come across a lot of military checkpoints just driving around here, and you see the guys standing there with their guns, and they're all wearing masks covering their face. We'd arranged a series of interviews, but most of the sources who had agreed to talk to us disappeared. Family members or others close to them say they had been arrested or gone into hiding after massed machine gun toting security forces raided their homes and threatened them. The Bahrain Center for Human Rights says more than 460 people have been detained in recent weeks. Nurses who treated wounded protesters, doctors, bloggers, a poet. Nabil Rajab of the Bahrain Center for Human Rights says that there's fear these people are being tortured. There are people who were hanged for a month and they were electrocuted and sexually harassed and assaulted. And this is the way they are treated inside Bahraini prisons. We tried to investigate these arrests ourselves, but our second day in Bahrain, helicopters hovered overhead as we stood in the street outside Nabil Rajab's home. Suddenly, half a dozen military and police vehicles surrounded us. About 20 men in black ski masks some wearing civilian clothing, pointed machine guns at us. They forced us to get on the ground at gunpoint. They erased all the video they found. Then we were taken to a police station and interrogated for nearly six hours before being released. Bahrain's foreign minister couldn't tell us why we were arrested. To scare somebody not to say anything or to scare someone not to express his views. This is not a government policy. We asked him about the missing. There were many who I know personally who have been uh, called in for questioning and uh, arrested, but for a short period of time it was for questioning. But I didn't hear that any one of them being harmed in any way just for blogging or being uh, active online. From this point on, government minders were attached to our team at all times. They would not allow us to film any of the tanks or military. Oh, yeah. filming? What's that? No, there's a, a tanker down there. Don't. Oh, no, there's no, a no. tanker where? Yeah. The tank. Yes. Oh, the tank. I don't want them to come to you. And <laughs> how, come on, we have, how can we not shoot this stuff? No, and our minders told us that there were no protests. Mm -hmm. Can we a, do the protest today? Can we film the protest? What protest? There's no protest. I've said to do the protest. protest. Instead, our minders brought us to see the nice things in Bahrain. They brought us to the shopping mall to look at the fine selection of Bahraini shoes. Meanwhile, while we were being minded, human rights workers told us security forces continued to raid homes late at night, taking the opposition away one by one at gunpoint. As a security, national security. But we were warned by government officials not to press oh, yeah. any further, or we would again be arrested. Are those guys following us all day? Oh, the police. No, no, no. They are not following us. And this time, we might not get out.